Hi. I'm Animal underscore Man underscore. I have a PhD in History and Documentation from the University of Reddit. And today, I'm here to answer some questions that have had historians stumped for about the past two and a half hours. Today, we're looking at the legendary, no, the mythical story. We're taking a closer look into the life, triumphs, and fall of the individual most historians refer to as Super Gummying. We're not exactly sure what year the legends of super gummying started popping up, but most historians believe that super gummying was born anywhere from the year 1767 to 2010. This is due to his behavior being super childish while at the same time being old enough to understand how to fire muskets. His name isn't super well documented either. Some sources refer to him as gummy, while others refer to him as gumlin. Others refer to him as super gummying, yet still others call him gum gum. Even more recently, scientists discovered a fossilized Discord message that refers to him as Gummy Bell, puzzling historians all the more. Where he was born is also hotly debated. Some believe that he was born in Camelot and his father was King Arthur. While a lot of details surrounding his birth are unknown, we do know that he had a sister named Ida. What? Anyway, the first sightings of Super Gummying go back to the early 21st century when he decided to go on an ancient platform known as YouTube. At the time, there was a lot of competition in the YouTube scene, and a lot of people were competing for the attention of the collective audience of YouTube. So Gummy needed to stand out. He needed a mascot that would speak to his character, draw new viewers in, and represent him and his content well. Gummy knew he loved Pokemon, and he knew he probably would be playing a decent amount of Pokemon on his channel, so he had a fair share of iconic, recognizable Pokemon at his disposal. He had Dragonite, Metagross, Garchomp, or even Tyranitar, perfect beasts from a recognizable franchise that would solidify his place in the YouTube scene. So he chose freaking Weezing. But the next big step was to figure out how he would revolutionize the platform with content he produced. And to Gummy, the decision was obvious. He had to do what no YouTuber had done before him and record gameplay footage and upload it to YouTube. Although he never gets credit for it, Super Gummying actually invented the walkthrough. He sparked a movement of many YouTubers YouTubers following suit, but there was one problem. Gummy wasn't receiving the attention he knew he deserved. While other people were getting thousands of views, Gummy could barely hit 20. He knew he had to switch up the formula in order to maintain relevance. So he decided to spy on his enemies by watching their videos, and he discovered that they had something that he didn't have. Friends. He knew that if he made friends with people cooler than him, he could get more clout. But there was one problem. You see, King Arthur had trapped his kids on an island known as the Frozen Island to protect his children from the outside world. Ida didn't really care all that much because she had an internet connection, but Gummy had enough and decided to start swimming. Yeah. Gummy swam as hard as he could, coming across many dangers, but he had enough soggy potatoes to keep him fed, his kidneys shut down because of the salt water, and a shark tried to eat him but he managed to escape with the help of his trusty musket. Finally, after 48 days of swimming, he reached the shore and fell into a deep slumber, and when he woke, he saw a large orange figure looming over him. Right, what, what kind of fresh awfulness awaits me here? What's up, kiddies? That kind, okay, good to know. What? Are you killable? You look killable. No, wait! I just came here to search for a friend. Will, will you be my friend? God, no. <sighs> Maybe. I'm a diplomat, I gotta behave myself. Historians are still puzzled to this day on how these two became friends, and some even debate if they ever were friends, but that's how it most likely went down. However, that wasn't all the friends he made. He knew he had to make some more friends to cast a bigger net, so he found some others. Dynamite, the Witcher of Hydreigon's lineage, the real Master 9000, which some scholars say he was known as Obi-Wan Kenobi at some point, which is what I will be referring to him as from now on, on Jello Hammer, who would only come out once every 17 years and then go back into hibernation to maintain immortality. Kugly Blitz, who was a master mathematician and professional geometry <laughs> dash player. Will of D, who was a professional artist and professional Persona 5 player. 
King Corfish, who eventually became too cool for everyone else, I guess. Vortex of Absol, who was a professional musician. Demon Lord, the most Canadian demon you will ever meet. Oh, and Midnight Bella, who could reportedly bench all of the rest of them combined. And then, around this time, I came along. I was personally invited to join Gummy's group of friends. There were some other people who came before me, such as- Alright, hi guys. Cairo. Um, that's my name. My name is Cairo. Short for Cairo Show. There were some other people who came before me, such as the Chuckster, Cuddles the Skitty, and Skull Kid Fan. Unfortunately, there is very little documentation on these individuals. Or, I, or I'm- I'm just too lazy to ask anyone about them, but yeah. This collective of people made up a small community known as Camelot. Why was it named Camelot? Not entirely sure, but who cares? You see, something bigger was going on here, because this crew didn't just come together for no reason. They came together thanks to one common interest, a YouTuber who had been extremely successful. His name was Super Skarmory, and he had maintained quite a following over the years. But Gummy noticed something odd about Super Skarmory. He had some very strange behavior. He noticed that Super Skarmory had a number of things in common with Super Gummying. He called all of his videos walkthroughs, which was weird, but a lot of people copied his walkthrough idea, so he shrugged it off. But then he noticed that he was playing some of the same games, with some of the same phrases, and even felt his name was ripped off. He had put a Super in his name, and his mascot was a Pokemon. Nobody seemed to notice that Super Skarmory was clearly ripping off Super Gummying, and he found this to be very discouraging. But he decided it was wisest for him to keep his mouth shut and just observe. So he did. He stayed on the low, and continued producing content the same way he always did. But he still wasn't receiving the attention he knew his content was worth. So, fed up with all this nonsense, he stormed into the office of Susan and demanded Susan give him more subscribers. In response, Susan said, LOL NO, and kicked Gummy out of Area 51. Gummy was determined to get what he rightfully deserved, so he harassed Susan seven more times to get what he wanted, and as a result, the unthinkable happened. On June the 13th, 2015, at 5.06 p.m. Mountain Time, Gummy's channel was removed. He lived a short life, cut off too quickly, grossly mistreated during his lifetime, left to be forgotten by anyone and everyone except for his group of friends. His friends at Camelot mourned his passing, knowing that... Wait, what? What's up, kiddies? Gummy's channel may have died, but that didn't stop Gummy from coming back stronger than ever. Against all odds, puzzling historians to this day, Gummy rose from the grave, ready more than ever to get back into content creation, back into the grind and hustle that he had been well known for back to YouTube. So he made a new YouTube channel and got back at it again. He maintained his upload schedule, improved his commentary, and stayed true to the genre of videos that he created. Super Skarmory had only gained more traction as time went on, but that didn't distract Gummy. He kept pouring his soul into his work until he had no soul left. Then he went back to Area 51 to demand Susan to give him more subscribers. Again. Didn't I just ban you plebeian? Finally, Gummy had truly died. He escaped the grip of death once before, but his YouTube career was over. He would never be able to post another video- What's up, kiddies? That's it! I want my money back! Gummy had somehow risen back to life for the second time. He got back on his saddle, created a new YouTube channel named Super Gummying. He changed his mascot to Sylveon so that he would seem more innocent, and Susan would be more forgiving. He also created a Patreon so that he could seem more professional and ask for his friends to donate. Demon Lord was the only one willing to donate, despite the fact that he only made $12 an hour torturing souls in the underworld, so that was very generous of him. But alas. Hey, how many times do I have to tell you to get off of YouTube, kid? I'm not going to tell you again. Get off my empire or I will bamboozle you to the next dimension. 
Finally, Gummy had truly died. What's up, kitties? Dude, how many times are you going to die? None of us, like, even care anymore. Depending on which source you read, Gummy died anywhere from 6 to 37 times over the course of his career. No one has any explanation for his survival. It seems to be supernatural in a sense, and no scientist has managed to make any sense of it. We may never know just how many times Gummy died, and we may never care either. But in between all the deaths, we saw the rise of Camelot in its formative years. Gummy established Camelot as a hub for all people who were watching Super Skarmory. He put Obi-Wan in command with him, and he put Ida on leadership as well. Super Skarmory had taken a long hiatus from YouTube and had become a streamer on Twitch. He changed his name to King of Zeal, but despite being a king, he decided to hold off on building his kingdom, so Gummy made Camelot available for Zeal's people. Camelot felt very shallow, though. It felt like it lacked purpose, that the hole it filled wasn't satisfactory enough, and the people needed more. And one person decided to step up to make Camelot interesting. That person was me. Yo, what's up, boss man? I've got a proposal for you guys, all right? I can really spice this place up, all right? Hear me hear me out, all right? Hear me out. What if we did a Pokemon tournament? That like league po Pokemon tournament sort of thing? And I could like host the tournament? It'd be a lot of fun. We could get, we could call it the CLB, the Camelot League Battles, like it, huh? Huh? Obi-Wan and Ida didn't give a crap, but Gummy said sure, and even joined the first tournament. So the CLB season one was born, and the contestants were Animal Man, Shave Gorilla, Midnight Bella, Kairosho Dynamite, Vortex of Absol, Crow Songs, and Super Gummying himself. But Gummy had no idea that joining this league was a deadly, terrible mistake to make. You see, during one of these battles, Gummy died again. It's one of the very few deaths Gummy had that wasn't in relation to Susan. It's also one of the most well-documented deaths of his as well, as it was recorded on live camera. The footage you are about to witness is very graphic, and in some cases it may haunt your dreams. I warn you, do not watch this clip if you are queasy. I am actually the one who recorded this footage, and even I was overwhelmed with amuse- I mean disgust. It's BB time. Uh. Look at that damage! What? what? Okay, okay. Something wrong? Okay, okay, fine. No, no, nothing's wrong. Keep going. Okay. <clears throat> Gloves are off. I'm gonna do this. Okay, you do that. Gummy, I think I'm winning. I think I'm winning, Gummy. Um. Goodbye, no, Sylvia. No, not my Sylvia. What is this? Oh, intimidate. What? Oh, you think I'm intimidated? Goodbye, Salamence. Uh, You're getting swept by an Ambi Pum. I just want to let you know. What's up, kiddies? <laughs> After about 10 or so deaths, Gummy realized that he needed to try something different because YouTube just wasn't working out for him. He needed a new platform, something that he could rely on, something that didn't have a terrible CEO like Susan, and something that wouldn't ban him for chasing his dreams. So Gummy became a viner! Meanwhile, a major shift in Camelot was about to take place at around this time that was expected but still somewhat saddening. The King of Zeal himself finally decided it was time to build his kingdom and enlisted the help of Obi-Wan to help him. The Kingdom of Zeal was built, and so Camelot was made unnecessary. As everyone proceeded to move over to the Kingdom of Zeal, Gummy and his friends said their goodbye to the server. Even though it was small and kinda shallow, it still held some great memories. Memories that they didn't want to forget. Abandoning Camelot was difficult, but it was nothing in comparison to what Gummy would face in the future. The Kingdom of Zeo was a very well organized and put together kingdom. Most people who left Camelot found their place at home right away, and even found some new friends like Flubs, Squid of Baconator, <laughs> Maid Draco, and a bunch of other people I don't really feel like making an avatar for. They even met a bot. Wait. Actually, I, th I think this bot was with us in Camelot. Skarm, were you with us in Camelot? Best kittens exist. I'm pretty sure Skarm was with us in Camelot, actually. Anyway... Here, the mega chicken. Also, according to my peer-reviewed, reputable source, uh, King of Zeal had a girlfriend named, uh, Penelope. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. That was, that was his girlfriend, right? Yeah. Yes. 
definitely his girlfriend. <laughs> For the most part, everyone got along with everyone pretty well. The community was growing and King of Zeal was streaming fairly regularly. However, Gummy noticed that some things were off especially with the king. And that's when Gummy knew that he knew who he was. Gummy knew the king was guilty of stealing all of Gummy's original ideas, and he showed it. The king went out of his way to ignore the poor Gummy. Despite his leadership roles in Camelot, Zeal made his friend Obi-Wan royalty, and then he made his best friends Dragonite and Demon Lord gurus of this kingdom. And if that wasn't bad enough, he then promoted his own sis, Ida, to guru practically spitting in the face of Gummy. He knew Zeal was trying to spite him, but that was fine with Gummy. He knew that all he had to do was work his way up the right way. And if you hadn't been selected by Zeal himself to be royalty, you had to grind in his kingdom in order to achieve higher statuses in the hierarchy. And how do you grind in this kingdom? You talk a lot. And Gummy knew he was more than capable of talking. So he talked and talked and continued conversation after conversation with all of his friends. He talked and talked until he was Blue Ogin, then Red Gaylor, then Mass Immune. Until one day, he did the impossible and reached the rank of Pink New. Unmatched by any of his fellow citizens of Zeal, he made it to the top, but not without consequences. You see, it is rather difficult to run your mouth in the manner Gummy did without hurting some people along the way. Some people grew very annoyed with Gummy, but Gummy knew they were only jealous they didn't have the talking skills that he had. Some people felt it was outlandish and ridiculous, but Gummy knew they simply wanted a pink name tag. Sometimes with the amount of words coming out of your mouth, you're bound to hurt specific individuals, which can be no problem, unless of course she can bench the rest of the kingdom combined. But it was around this time when Gummy realized that if enough people spoke up about Gummy, it would be the perfect reason for the king to kick him out, which he probably wanted to do to hide his secrets from the people. But by the time he realized this, it was too late, and he knew it. So he decided to confront the king himself. It's time we have a talk about you copying me. You know what, fool? I'm gonna take my fist, ram it into your stomach, Get an awesome accent, and then become the governor of California. What? I don't want to hear anything out of your mouth ever again. <laughs> on that day, on that fateful day, Super Gummying was banished from the kingdom of Zeal, never to return. He had done what he felt was right, and in the end, it cost him everything. All he had worked for in the kingdom of Zeal all of the friendships he made, for nothing. He looked around as he headed for the kingdom's edge, all of his old friends just watching in silence. Not even a goodbye, not a whisper. But what did it matter? Everything he had set out to do had failed. Everything that his life had built up to had fallen. All his dreams and ambitions fell flat in the face of his own desires. There was an investment that took everything Gummy had. And his return was a trip into his own personal underworld. Gummy walked slowly through the warm sand. The ocean breeze drifted at just the right speed to cool him off from the beating sun, but not so harshly that it was noticeable. The waves reached for his feet and then backed away as if they were repelled by him. His friends had left him. His family was nowhere to be seen. His career was over. His dreams had become nightmares. He wondered if it was ever really his purpose in life to do the very thing he decided he would do. He wondered what the point of his life was. Gummy looked over to the horizon, to the divide where the sky blue met the darker blue of the ocean. He watched the waves rise and fall and took a deep breath. <sighs> what is the point of this? He asked himself. He stood on the very same beach that Dragonite found him on years ago, and he knew that his home island was across the ocean. 
He knew that he could throw in the towel now, swim back to where his sis lived, and leave his past behind. He wasn't even sure if he had the mental state necessary to swim across the ocean again. But he certainly didn't have the mental state necessary to live in the graveyard of his forgotten dreams. He knew that he could leave now, and be forgotten as a distant memory, a faint whisper. Are you killable? You look killable. Dude, how many times are you going to die? None of us, like, even care anymore. That's it! I want my money back! I don't want to hear anything out of your mouth ever again. Gummy. Gummy. Huh? What was that? Hey, Gummy. Oh, Demon Lord. It's you. What's the matter, Gummy? I feel like I may as well swim back home now. Gummy, you don't need to go anywhere. Just because you're no longer at Zeal doesn't mean we can't be friends. It doesn't mean we aren't with you. We? What do you mean, we? That's right, Gummy. We are here. Another happy landing. Okay. What the chicken? You know what? What am I doing? God no. Yeah. That's right, Gummy. We are here. It was in that moment that Gummy was filled with determination. His spirit was lifted, and his eyes were set on new horizons. In that moment, Gummy realized that he was only a failure by his own standards. But that wouldn't matter to the people who had formed long-lasting bonds with him. He knew that whatever valley he went down into, whatever obstacle he had to overcome, he would always have the support of the people who had been there for him for years. Win or lose, rise or fall, as long as there was still breath in his lungs, he knew that he would see the next day, and the next, and the next after that. So he set out with his friends to rebuild Camelot once again, but this time, Camelot wasn't hollow. It was filled with the collective chatter of a group of misfits who found sanctuary in one another's company. And before long, other people joined as well, and the community grew to a size that was big enough to keep everyone company, but wasn't so big that they would drown in a sea of voices. More freedom, more politics, and more self-promotion. Who cares what Super Skarmory built it's before us? To the evil we of all Skyrim's foes beware, beware the Dragonborn comes. Who cares what Ian built before us? We are thankful for what he started, but we move forward with our chins up and our hearts full for our future endeavors, for our legacies, and for our friendships. Nothing can ever stand in our way. So, Gummy and his friends rebuilt Camelot and called it Camelot 2.0, and they existed harmoniously with the Kingdom of Zeal from that moment on. Things weren't all peachy, but for the most part, everyone's perspective was set straight. What mattered was that they stuck together so long as they could. And they did stick together for a very long time. At one point or another, they started to grow up and were given more responsibilities. Dragonite eventually became a famous video game creator, well known for his game about magic ducks or something. Kugly Blitz became one of the world's greatest geometry dash player, and was the mathematical brains behind the rocket that would turn Pluto into a small space hub in between Earth and Mars. Will of D became one of the greatest artists of all time, with some of her paintings selling for five gazillion dollars. Flubs became the next big rapper in the rap game, revolutionizing the music industry with his hit single, Deep Fried Pineapples. Vortex of Absol changed his name to Sterling, became a famous DJ, married Gummy at you one point, and ride. then died. Jello woke up temporarily from his slumber to watch this video, then went back into hibernation. Ida became a spy for a secret organization and set up her base of operations on the frozen island. 
Kairosho went on to throw every playoffs in every season of the CLB. Skarm became a full-time therapist, got married, and had six children. Midnight Bella got struck by lightning and actually became a superhero, so that's cool. Demon Lord became an important political figure in Hell, and convinced Satan to stop causing people to lag when they were playing online shooters. Obi-Wan Kenobi died in like episode 4 of Star Wars, but he'll probably be back in episode 10 thanks to some bullskitty reasoning. May the plot devices be with you, the real master. After a while, King of Zeal stepped down from his throne, got an awesome accent, and became the governor of California. I went on to make this video because I have way too much free time. And many others went on to do many other great things. And Gummy. What did Gummy do? Well, he did gummy things. But what are gummy things, exactly? Well, you could say that gummy things are derpy things, one ridiculous disaster after another. And maybe you'd be somewhat right, because Gummy is sort of like the protagonist of a really bad comedy movie, always messing up, always tripping over himself. But in another sense, Gummy's story represents more than just failure. Gummy's story is a story about falling over and then getting back up, never giving up, even when no one supports you, being true to himself, and possibly most important, Gummy's story is a story of friendship. There is a group of people around today who live all over the world and have no reason to know of each other's existence whatsoever. And yet, they do. They were drawn together through the power of nostalgia for a washed up YouTuber, and stuck together in large part thanks to Gummy, who always kept the conversation rolling. We all knew that whatever we would go through in the future, we were but a Discord message away from one another. And we were brought together in large part thanks to Gummy. So in the end, Super Gummying, no matter how much we provoke you, no matter how much we poke you, no matter how much we make fun of you, no matter how much we make you our punching bag, we are still there for you, and we do appreciate you. <sighs> Alright, so that was good, right? Yeah, I guess the last bit was pretty good. Good! Good. So you're you're gonna let me you're gonna let me go now, right? You're gonna stop pointing that musket at me, and I'm gonna go home now. Nope. No. What? What do you mean no? Well, for starters, I asked the video to be two hours long, two, and guess two what? hours. You didn't even make you expect it two me to do this long. for two hours. And I want this video to be like similar to like sneaky minutes, video dude. about you, all my accomplishments. I don't you know didn't mention about sneaky. my league accomplishments. I don't care about you didn't mention about my Twitch me. accomplishments. Twitch. And what accomplishments what? on never Twitch? What do you think you do? Stream Animal Crossing. So I saw my grandfather for the first time in 10 years, and I hadn't felt that happy since I caught my shiny Skarmory I have Pokemon finalized Emerald. the most important development in the history of You know Let's what? Plays. I'm done with you interrupting me. I'm leaving forever. Never speak to me again. I don't get paid enough for this.